All right, what's going on, you guys? It's Kevin, the Full Metal Ginger. Time for our metal albums of the year for 2017. Uh, really, really fun list to put together. Very difficult one to put together, but as of this moment, man, I, I think I'm satisfied with it. Uh, that'll probably change here in the next month or week or hour, but yeah, I, I think I'm good with it as of right now. But uh, last video of the year for me, we will go ahead and jump right into this. Hopefully, it'll fucking, you'll like it and all that. Again, I mean, if there's fucking shit on here that you don't see that you wish was on there, I don't have it, so kiss my ass. Uh, I didn't get to everything I wanted to. Uh, narrowed this down to 15 albums uh, out of probably 23 that I picked up, so I think we've got a good, solid list here. Uh, we're listening to Inquisition, Bloodshed Across the Imperian Altar. Um, this was last year's album of the year for me, so I thought it fitting that, you know, we kind of... You know, pass one year off for the next, so uh, maybe we'll make this a tradition on here. I don't know. All right, with that out of the way, uh, I did have some honorable mentions that I wanted to talk about, but it was just taking so much time on the video, so I will skip that. I'll just leave links for them down below. You can check those out, and we will jump right into this. First one we have, and actually these first three are very recent, so I'm probably just going to blow right through those. Because, I mean, you've heard me talk about them. Uh, the first one is a demo, and uh, I'm one of those, I don't give a fuck if it's a demo, an EP, or a full length. If it came out this year, it counts, so you're going to have to kiss my ass on that one as well. Uh, a really good demo, too. At number 15, we have Outline, Fire, Whiplash. Um, this is actually a continuance of Demona, 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 whatever. Uh, really good speed metal out of Cleveland. I think Tonza, uh, the girl who does guitar and vocals, she was... Um, Kind of wanted to take the band in a different direction, kind of give the band a little bit more of a different outlook, I guess you'd say. And I guess she thought a name change was in order, so, I mean, that's why you have Outline. But, I mean, really, outside of it being a little bit more traditional, there's really not much difference. Uh, whereas the Demona stuff was a little bit more similar to Iron Angel or Midnight. I just kind of had that abrasion going for it. Again, this is a little bit more simplified and stripped down and a little more traditional. But a really cool speed metal album, or demo. Um, and I do believe they're putting out a full length sometime next year, so I will definitely be looking for that But I mean outside of that um, not too much different again from Demona, so if you're into that band at all you will certainly dig this and uh, Again, I'm really really looking forward to the full length whenever that's gonna drop so number 15 outline fire whiplash really cool uh, next up we have a record to show and this is another recent release uh it's an ep actually uh band out of spain man this is a uh, crossfire burning torches um as i said it's really good black thrash uh, it's really fast aggressive and harsh uh, i guess you could compare it to like um r noir nephelheim for certain uh gospel of the horns which is one of my favorite black thrash bands and these guys actually really fit into that mold for sure um I guess the best way to explain it fully, it's it's got a nice blend of German thrash with some uh, speed metal on top of that, and uh, it's got some really good, um, like, haunting, chilling black metal leads, which are kind of just sprinkled in there, here and there, so it just kind of gives it its own different vibe. Um, the vinyl itself is limited to 500 copies, I do believe, and uh, 110 of those are on gold, so I was lucky enough to get that one. And outside of that, nothing else comes with this. But uh, yeah, a really good EP. And I want to say that they're putting out a full length next year as well, but I might just be totally wrong about that. But uh, really cool nonetheless. That's uh, Crossfire, Burning Torches at number 14. Uh, next up, we have a, another cassette. And uh, this one came out, or at least it shipped out uh, around Black Friday. So I've not had this one that long. Um, but at the same time, it's one that I felt needed to be on the list. Um, it's one I've listened to quite a bit just to justify putting it on the list. I really, really love this. Uh, it's fucking amazing. This is at number 13, Black People's Savior and Darkness Fell. Um, Black Death out of Texas, and they are definitely, this is far and away, another classic from the Texas Black Death scene. Um, you, it's definitely that Bastille type metal, but uh, it's really also oriented towards uh, a little bit more of a catchy riff, that kind of style. Um, they got former members of Morbosa Dot in here, uh, one of the guys is anyway, and um, take that and then kind of sprinkle in some Pro Fanatica on top of it, that'll kind of give you an idea of what this sounds like. <coughs> Sorry. Um, really the best way I can explain it otherwise, at least in terms of songwriting, it's got um, 
where DSI used to have the really, at least in the earlier work, have the really frantic riffs going in the earlier part of the song and then kind of maybe have a slight breakdown and then kind of go to a little bit more mid-tempo style. Uh, they've definitely got this going on here, but it's not anything like DSI, but it definitely has that style, that style of uh, song structure and songwriting. Just put the, the steel shit in there with it and you kind of have a pretty good grasp of what this is. Uh, but yeah, again, I didn't really have a lot of time to spend on it, so I didn't want to put it up too high on the list. But it's about where it needs to be, at least in terms of the time that I'm recording this. So, uh, yeah, really good album, man. That's uh, Thy Feeble Savior and Darkness Fell at number 13. Let me get some water. Goddamn fifth time I've recorded this. At number 12, we have one that I've had a good while now. And I'm probably, this is probably going to be the first biggest mistake <laughs> you know where I'm placing this on the list so um, I'll probably really regret this at some point but at number 12 as of right now this is where they are this is Bone Hunter Sexual Panic Human Machine uh, you should all know Bone Hunter by now uh, Black Thrash and Punk from uh, Ulu Finland uh, really in the vein of Venom uh, maybe more so Abigail it's definitely got that kind of vibe going here um, just speedy up tempo guitars uh, harsh vocals lots of groove very fast um, well it's fast at times uh, it's actually really well balanced um, you've got a nice um, balance of you know the faster songs and then I don't want to say slow songs but slower songs and it uh, actually keeps it really well balanced and keeps you from getting bored too quickly for certain um, uh, absolutely pure energy on this though I mean you cannot get bored of it uh, it'll just grab you by the balls and start twisting you and you just get it right into it for certain um, I guess the only really knock I have on this is and I shouldn't do this but I compare it more to uh, their 2015 release uh, Evil Triumphs Again which I thought that album was had a little bit more low end a little bit is a little bit more raunchy sounding the production was a little better at least in terms of what I like and uh, it was a little bit better written um, but I mean it's, it's like very slight and I really shouldn't base it on that but I, I just I'm one of those that I, if I start off with a really good album from a band that I end up comparing everything to it so it's just kind of a knock on me really I shouldn't do shit like that but uh, I thought number 12 at least as right now was a pretty good spot but I'm not knocking it at all it's a really good album definitely check it out and it has a big gigantic bear cock so uh, what's not to like <laughs> But whatever, man. That's Bone Hunter Sexual Panic Human Machine at number 12. Let's scroll this computer down. I'm having to use this as my notes so I didn't have to stick fucking paper everywhere. I definitely don't want to forget anything. Alright, number 11, we have a demo that I actually kind of just stumbled upon. And I'm really glad I did because this is some hauntingly evil sounding black metal. Uh, this is Cataphract, the Witch Power of Invisibility at uh, number 11. Black metal out of Kansas, a lot, you know. Of all places, you wouldn't think you'd find this in Kansas. Uh, if you guys can find this, I would highly recommend it, but it is limited, at least on the cassette, to 50 copies. So I don't know what the availability of that is. Uh, it's on Sorted Curse Productions, so if you want to look there, I guess, or try to find it somewhere. Um, they are really haunting, very chilling, very lo-fi style of black metal. Um, just think like uh, early Emperor or early Satyricon and take a little bit more of the symphonic shit out. That's basically what it sounds like. Um, I liken it to, uh, like, imagine you're storming a massive, evil black castle on a stormy night, you know. Uh, just listen to it when it rains at night. It's, it fits it so perfectly, especially in the wintertime. Um, just, it's a really killer fucking black metal release. I uh, don't know if they're going to have anything else out anytime soon, but... Um, yeah, it's just, I hope they do, man. This has got a ton of blast beats, and it's really coupled with uh, the really rough and crude sounding guitars. And those guitars really paint a picture of, like, despair and dread. Uh, this is definitely a really bleak piece of music. And you gotta love Haggard's face right here. Look at that shit. Damn! I don't know. I just always thought that was funny. Uh, but yeah, pick this up if you can. It's uh, amazing shit. This is uh, Cataphract, The Witch Power of Invisibility, number 11. So we are cracking the top 10, finally, and uh, I think I might, able, might be able to save some time. Uh, again, I don't know if I've said this earlier, I probably didn't, but uh, the reason I had to cut out the um, honorable mentions was just because it was taking so much damn time, my damn phone would just trip out every time it would get to 30 minutes. 
Uh, but yeah, fuck whatever. Uh, number ten, uh, an album I never got around to showing, and I think the reason why was just because uh, everybody and their brother was talking about this at one point or another. So I didn't want to jump on it being another Johnny Come Lately. Um, but listen to this, it's really fucking good, and I'm, I'm really stoked to have it. This is Black Lease. Vanish from Tom. It came out on Iron Bonehead. Um, really raw black metal out of Portugal, which I guess you all know that by now. Um, personally, I don't think this is as, as raw as their earlier material, which, I mean, that's good or bad, depending on how you want to look at it. To me, I don't really give a shit. Um, but this is still a really... The band produced a really dismal, suicide-inducing record, man. This bone-chilling atmosphere, uh, gloomy songwriting, raw to its core, but also stays really engaging. Um, I'm one of those who I can't listen to music and just stare at the walls. I have to be doing something else while I'm doing that. But this one, I can do it. It's just I really get caught up in the atmosphere and the, uh, I guess, the picture it's trying to paint with fucking music. It's fucking amazing. Um, and you know, with Black's Lease, they're always going to give you quite a bit of reading material on here, um, which I'm not going to read that because it'll take way too much time. But you know. Um, and I don't know what the limitation is on this, but I got it on blue, and this is one of my favorite fucking uh, records that I have, at least in terms of cosmetic appeal. Uh, it just looks so good, especially catch it in the right light. Uh, definitely one of my favorite ones here. Uh, it comes with a poster of the cover art. Um, which, eh, it's not my favorite when it comes to this band. Uh, the inner sheet looks like this. It's got more reading material. Uh, I kind of wish this had been the cover art instead. That just looks so much better, I think. A little bit more detail just stands out a little bit more. Whereas uh, the cover art on this one just really fucking... It's just too much gray, I think. I don't know. It just doesn't contrast very well, in my opinion. But, again, I'm talking about cosmetic shit. It really doesn't matter. Still put out a really great album here. That's uh, Black Solis, Vanished from Time, at number 10. Alright, at number 9, we have a uh, kick-ass Black Death album from Chili. Um, it's actually more straightforward death, at least uh, on this record. Uh, this is Black... Oh, fuck, Black. Death Yell with uh, Descent Into Hell. Um, debut full length for a band that's been around as long as I've been alive, which is odd. But, I mean, I'm glad to see they're finally getting a push and kind of... You know, moving up in the world a little bit. Um, I compare this, at least this release, to like a Nun Slaughter with a little bit more speed and technicality. Uh, it's a really, it's a fucking riff machine for sure. Really precise, searing hot Black Death. Uh, and this one, at least, is very different from their earlier work. I think their earlier work focused a little bit more on the black metal side, where this one is pretty much a straightforward death metal. Uh, but definitely a good list, and I've thoroughly enjoyed this one. Um, just felt number nine was a good spot for it because I need to listen to it a little bit more uh, but yeah that's really about all I have to say about that one that's uh, Death Yell Descent Into Hell at number nine at number eight a record that I've still for the life of me am having a hard time describing <laughs> it's just one of those I guess this is uh, Vault Wraith Death is Proof of Satan's Power at number eight uh, definitely the most varied release on this list uh, it's hard to describe it's really like a combination of I don't know, uh, traditional heavy metal, speed metal, death metal, and a little bit of epic black metal kind of sprinkled in on top of it. Um, it's, you would think that would sound really diluted and just kind of mix up not very well, but I mean, it's actually extremely well written, and uh, a lot of it comes across as really groundbreaking shit. Um, what makes it good is like you have a, a bit of familiarity with this, but at the same time, it's a lot of it sounds really groundbreaking. And I think the reason why is, like, if you take all the best aspects of those genres I mentioned, you know, take the most familiar things about them and then put it all into this album, that's kind of what you get here. Um, so that's the best way I can explain it. Um, comes on a purple and orange splatter vinyl. Um, I don't know the limitation on this one either. Uh, I think it's really nice, but I kind of wish it was a little bit of a darker purple. I think that would have fitted a little bit better. But yeah, um, in terms of cover art, that's for sure probably album of the year, at least in that regard. Just look at it, man. You got Satan and his mistress taking an adventure through hell, and this guy looks so happy to be there. I just love that. He's just playing the key or the organ and just having him himself a fucking ball. So yeah, man, um, again, really fucking varied. Um, I don't really know how to describe it. This is one you just kind of have to check out for yourself. But uh, it's one I've really grown to love. It's 
amazing, man. That's Bolt Raid, Death is Proof of Satan's Power at number eight. Uh, this next one took me a while to grasp, and I think it was just because it comes off a bit more of a compilation. It sounds a bit like that for me, uh, and you know, instead of a full length, but it's not really that big of a knock, but I don't know, man. Uh, I guess it's to each his own. Uh, this is Goat Moon, Stella Polaris at number seven. And I'll tell you what, though, uh, dude put out a really varied uh, album this year, man. Um, you've got some raw black metal in here, uh, some traditional Finnish style, uh, some folk black metal in here. It's, it just took me a while to fully embrace, man. Um, I don't know, it just kind of comes off as just, please just pick a style and stick with it. It just seems a bit all over the place. Um, but the reason I did pick it so high was just because every song is really well done, very killer. Um, it just feels like where each style changes, whereas in Vault Wraith, every riff changes style. This one, every song changes style, and it just doesn't flow as well. But, you know, take each song for what it is, it's definitely a, some really superb black metal done here. Um, again, I don't know limitation. I, I want to say at least 100 or 200 on the blue variant, but it's whatever. Who gives a shit? I'm glad I have it on blue. Yeah, man, uh, every song kills. Again, it just feels like a bit more of like a compilation than anything else. But that's really the only bad thing I have to say about it. Um, definitely very well executed, very well written uh, release. It just doesn't flow as well as an, you know, as it should it on an, on an album. <laughs> so uh, yeah, man, that's really the only knock I have. Stellar black metal, man. That's uh, Goat Moon Stella Polaris at number seven. Pun intended. Scroll this down. All right, at number six, this one was very difficult for me to place for some reason. I don't know why. Um, I guess it just initially sounded really different, but the more I listened to it, the more I got into it. And them being one of my favorite bands, it was just one I definitely felt that I needed to give them the benefit of the doubt and give them enough of a listen to really say something. This is uh, Acid Witch, Evil Sound Screamers, another one I haven't got around to showing. Um, yeah, I struggle with the placement of this just because it was so new for me. I just picked this up not that long ago, but the physical format's not been out all that long. Uh, and I guess, you know, from Scare Tape to Mr. Beastle, I was like, please tell me the whole album isn't like this. But the more you listen, the more you kind of get where they're coming from. You get the approach of what the band's trying to accomplish. Uh, it's really kind of like um, Stoned 2.0, uh, Stepped Up a Notch. They definitely go more in that direction. And I'm one of the guys who likes Witch Tannic Hallucinations a little bit better. Um, but that's just whatever. Um, definitely a lot of samples on here, so this feels a little shorter in terms of music. Um, but the Halloween aspect is there, the Doom stuff is there. And I don't know, it just feels a little bit more different. But it's still well written, well performed. Still catchy, still spooky. Um, still everything you want with Acid Witch. Uh, I just kind of wish the physical copies had been available a little bit earlier, like mid-October at least, so I could have ridden around and seen the sides and saw the Halloween shit and just kind of felt more in the fall mood and vibe and all that sort of shit but it's whatever um still a really killer album i love the artwork and uh they put out a fucking wondrous bitch here i guess i'll just say that it just took me a few listens i guess to fully embrace it but that's acid witch uh evil sound screamers at number six so we are cracking the top five motherfuckers and uh this one at number five some fucking vulgar chilean black death this is Hades Archer, Temple of the Impure. Um, man, this shit's fucking intense. Uh, basically, it's like a more controlled, more straightforward Black Witchery, whereas Black Witchery is on the verge of exploding. This is a little bit more in control and a little bit more dialed back. Um, you still got the really crazy Bastille war metal style of just blasting and frantic riffing, but they also uh, take their time with it and break up the album a little bit more. Um, it's got a few songs that actually um, sound a bit like the uh, Bathory-inspired Dark Throne songs. And uh, actually the title track on here, at least the opening riff, sounds eerily similar to Quintessence. So that kind of give you a, you know an idea of what this sounds like. And it's actually really good in my opinion. It kind of breaks up the monotony. I can't always listen to that style. Um, but this one you can get through easily just because it's so well balanced and it's not just frantic, crazy, out of control the whole damn time. Um, but yeah, man, a really grim, really occultic, really evil fucking album. Um, uh, really, really well done here, and I think they definitely have uh, done enough to stand out from their peers, and I'm sure this one's going to be on plenty of lists, so that's Hades Archer, 
Temple of the Impure, number five. Fucking well deserving of that spot. And this one, man, another classic. And the only one who I thought could possibly beat them out of this spot would be Acid Witch. But to me, this one was just too good to putt anywhere else. This is uh, another classic for Midnight. Sweet Death and Ecstasy at number four. And uh, like I said when I first got this, I was uh, initially a bit put off by Crush My Demons and Before My Time in Hell. And it's not that they're bad songs, but, you know, it's just a little bit more ambitious from what I was used to with Midnight. But that aside, you know, everything in between it is done really well. It's typical Midnight. If you know what Midnight sounds like, this is just a continuation of that. So, um, just a fantastic album again. I actually like this a little bit better than uh, No Mercy for Mayhem. Um, Satanic Royalty is still my favorite album from Midnight, but this one is definitely a close second. And uh, I'm going to show you the tape. If I did or not, but yeah, man. Um, once you get past like, okay, these first, this first and last song sound a little bit different, and just embrace it as, okay, they're just trying something different, but it's still giving you classic midnight. <sighs> this is fucking perfect. So again, another classic. Uh, Sweet death and ecstasy at number four, man. Awesome shit. And the final three, and these three are by far my favorite albums of the year. And um, I don't give a fuck if you disagree with me. At number three, by far my favorite death metal album. Um, so stoked to have this. Definitely really putrid, gnarly fucking death metal. Death metal the way it should sound. This is Cadaveric Incubator. Oh, fuck. Uh, Sermons of the Devouring Dead. I hope I said that right. I probably didn't. Yeah, Sermons of the, Devour Sermons of the Devouring Dead. I don't know why I always want to say serpents. Fuck, I don't even know what I said. Um, again, really fucking putrid, grimy, gnarly death metal out of uh, Helsinki, Finland. And I really worship this like repulsive septic tank sounding death metal. Um, it's just kind of what death metal should sound like, to, in my opinion. Um, this sounds like death smells. If that makes any sense, that's, that's the best analogy I could possibly give you. Um, just, uh, It's just disgusting sounding, man. It's like... Uh, just take like Asphyx and mix it with Embalmer and maybe throw in a bit of Repulsion and Mortician while you're on while you're there. Uh, that's the best way I can possibly describe this album. It's so fucking good. Um, whereas, you know, I think Pissgrave was really uh, getting that kind of nod in, what was it, 15? Yeah, Embalmer was doing it last year and then I guess for me this year it'd be Cadaveric Incubator. Um, you know, I mean, the guitars are just so grindy and blistering and fast but it's still got a ton of low end so it kind of gives it a sludgy feel on top of it. it's really weird but it sounds great uh the production on this album just fucking makes it perfection for me just it's so well done um and i was talking about the uh black salise album being one of my favorites in terms of cosmetic let me show you this first inner sheet nothing really there to look at just the fucking band and the art uh, yeah, but whereas uh, Black Salise was one of my favorites in terms of the way the vinyl looked, this one is number one for sure. Look at that, man. Just looks like either acid or fucking puke with black bile in it, man. Again, it's just another way of saying, hey, this is what this album sounds like. Look at this. If you like the way this looks, this is what it sounds like. And that's, I mean, that's me doing the best I can to explain this to you. It's fucking just gnarly. Sounds like it came out of the fucking septic tank, man. Spawned some fucking evil, disgusting thing, and that's what this album is. But easily my favorite death metal album of the year. I hope you all have checked this out by now. Uh, it's easily number three for me. Fucking a great album. That's uh, Cadaveric Incubator, Sermons of the Devouring Dead. Number three. And we go for my favorite death metal album to my favorite black metal album of the year and I gotta send a huge thank you to uh, Kevin Loza for telling me about this band and James McEwen for sending me this because otherwise I'm not sure I would have found out about it on my own and um, that's just uh, doing me doing the best I can to really emphasize how much I love this album. This is Sarkrista Summoners of the Serpent's Wrath number two uh goddamn what's in the water in finland man um just some brilliant black metal album or some brilliant black metal it's easily my favorite release of the year in that genre um to put it bluntly this is like i don't want to say it's traditional finnish style but i mean it's your sargeist your satanic war master your horna your baptism your behexen 
all put together under one album and just kind of turned up in terms of um, uh, yeah, it just the sound is just even more electrifying if that makes sense at all to you. Um, this is just over the top good, man. Um, just black metal, that black metal sound with making it even more hook laden and uh, it's just brilliantly done, man. Very epic in its atmosphere. Um, the way I would explain this, this is 2017's version of uh, Satanic War Master's Fimble Winter. That's how I feel about it. That's how strongly I feel about it. Um, just an amazing fucking record. Uh, I'm kind of getting rambly, but I mean, this is one that I can't seem to put into words how I feel about it. It's just by far my favorite black metal release of the year. Uh, came out on uh, Purity Through Fire, uh, which is a label I don't know too much about. Uh, it was just lucky to have it. I'm just so thankful to have it because it's one that I've just listened to so many times. It's countless hours with this record. And, uh, yeah, I just want to thank those dudes for letting me know about this and sending it to me because otherwise I don't know if I would have found out about it. Just so grateful to have this, man. That's uh, Sir Chris, uh, Summoners of the Serpent's Wrath, at number two. And finally, my album of the year, my favorite album by far, it's no contest. When I was putting this list together, I knew immediately what number one was going to be, and uh, I just had to fit everything else around that. So uh, if you've been watching my channel at all in the last month or two, you know exactly what I'm about to show. This is The Mighty Sakaj, Recidive, or whatever, at number one. Uh, just some black thrash gnarly dirty crust from Quebec Canada man this is absolutely relentless music it has everything I want in metal dudes um, speed ferocity lo-fi production uh, hooks to die for the vocals are absolutely perfect the production is perfect the guitars sound perfect the drums sound perfect and it's just non-stop attack from every single instrument and these dudes know how to play their instruments for damn sure and um, what's great about it is everything is so sharp so precise uh, but it never loses that gnarly, dirty sound, you know, it's, uh, it just, it still comes across as a very DIY type of album, man. Um, killer songwriting, flawless execution, and, uh, again, it's got that really garagey sound coming through it. Um, just take Bone Hunter and crank up the violence, crank up the fanaticism for heavy metal, and you get fucking Sakaj. Um, absolutely love the cover, by the way. Couldn't do no better than that right there, man. It just it encompasses everything in this cover. Encompasses what this album is. Uh, there's the inner sheet, which is not much there, but and the band. Let me put this back before I fucking fuck it up. Uh, again, I this is probably like the what the seventh record that I don't even know the uh, limitation on it. I don't know if it's even limited at all. Um, it does come on a silver vinyl. Uh, this came out on uh, PRC Music, I do believe, so uh, if you want to pick it up, just go check them out. Um, I got it through a, uh, who did I get this through? A guy on Big Cartel, I think, sent this to me. Uh, I do have it on tape, and the uh, tape is also on silver, so that's kind of cool. It just kind of matches, so I'm not certain, um, god damn it, get in there. I'm not certain if there's any other variant at all, but I mean, if you like Bone Hunter in any regard whatsoever, Turn up the intensity, turn up the hooks, turn up the groove. You have Sakaj, Recidive, or whatever. I don't know how to speak French. And uh, all their other music is the exact same shit, which I'm getting ready to go start picking that up here at the beginning of the year. Um, far and away, my favorite album of the year. It's just so well done, so well executed. I could not, not put it at number one. So uh, there they are at number one, man. Absolutely favorite album of the year. So that's it for me, guys. That's it for 2018. Uh, I really appreciate all the support you've given me this whole year. Um, I'm hoping to be able to come back strong in 2018. Don't know when exactly, but I will definitely do it at some point. Um, just follow me on Facebook and Instagram if you want. Links are there. You can subscribe while you're there. I'd really, really appreciate that. More than any of that, though, I want you to go check out all these bands. Uh, hopefully there's something in here you'll really enjoy. Uh, all these bands are definitely deserving of your attention. And uh, just please go check them out for me. I'd really appreciate that. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Time for me to ride off into the sunset. See you in 2018.